Let's look at stepping back. Let's look at stepping back when a strong emotion is beginning to overpower us, but before it actually does. And let's specifically focus on anger. We may not be into full-blown anger. In fact, the idea about stepping back, if we are, probably wouldn't work. I know some people say that it would. I don't think so. I think by that point, it's too late. We have to preemptively roll things back when that anger, when that irritation, when that annoyance is building up. And I want to share with you a little acronym that I've used myself and have taught to a few people that may help you. It's not a catch-all, it's not a panacea, but you may find it useful. To help us unpack that, let me tell you about something that happened to me and how I use this particular little acronym to allow me to walk away from a situation that could have gotten way out of hand. Before I do that, let's just run through using anger specifically as an example, how emotions can cause us to do things that aren't necessarily rational at all. So there's a cycle in terms of anger that a few people talk about, and it begins with the trigger. What happens? Someone cuts us up in traffic, let's say. We're annoyed, we're frustrated, whatever. We're building towards that anger. And right on the back of that, we can get those automatic thoughts creeping in, appearing out of nowhere. And those thoughts could be, what a fool, who's driving that car? Did they do that because I'm driving this car and they're jealous of my car? Or, hey, they don't like me or they did that just to annoy me because they don't think that much of me and so on. All this stuff, not necessarily remotely logical. Often it isn't logical at all. And on the back of those automatic thoughts, we can experience those emotions like the beginnings of annoyance, the beginnings of irritation, the beginnings of anger, or perhaps low-level anger. It hasn't overpowered us at this point, but it's there. And then what can happen is we can experience physical things like um, a racing heart, muscle tension, clenching the jaw, whatever. Some people say that, that the physical experience happens first before the emotions appear. I've talked about that in other videos, but let's just run with it this way for the moment. And then the behavior, the toot on the horn, the shouting. And some people you see, of course, can jump out of cars and that whole horrible road rage situation can appear. So that's an extreme example, but it is definitely an example of emotions overpowering us. There are situations where anger is it's an evolutionary adaptive strategy. And what I mean by that is it can allow us to defend, it can allow us to be filled with adrenaline to say, hey, hold on a second, push back on this aggressor who may be doing something which is absolutely outrageous or trying to. And so I'm not saying that that shouldn't happen or couldn't happen. What I am saying is that most of the time, most of us should walk away. Most of us should step down because thank goodness for many of us, most of us, but definitely not everyone, when we go about our daily business, what is happening is really something that in a day's time we probably will have forgotten about. It wouldn't amount to a hill of beans to use that phrase, but in the moment it seems really important. So how can we, how can we just de-escalate that feeling, that annoyance? So what happened to me a little while ago, not that long ago, was I was walking along in the morning with my four-legged family member and crossing a road. And this car came round the corner. I didn't think the headlights were actually illuminated. I think it was side lights that were on, but hey-ho, it was dark again, very early. And I sort of hesitated as this car zoomed by and I thought, wow, it was going pretty quickly. And I sort of looked uh, just to see which way the, the, the driver was going. It was a works van and thought nothing of it and began to cross the road. In fact, I was saying to myself, gosh, did I step off that pavement, that sidewalk too quickly? Didn't think I did, I'm pretty sure I didn't, but I was reflecting about that. Then I hear the screech and the van turns around and heads back up the road towards me and my little four-legged family member. And 
out jumps this guy. And the interesting thing was he moved around to the other side of the van. So if you imagine the van is between me and him and that's I think an important piece of information that I'll come back to. And it was sort of fairly low down van so the guy was looking uh, over the top of it and sort of said right come on then type thing. And I was more puzzled and perplexed but part of me was saying gradually to myself who the hell do you think you're talking to? What do you think you're doing? Now, because I hadn't shouted and said, your driving's appalling or what an idiot, I wasn't thinking that. I was thinking, that seemed a bit fast. Maybe it was me beginning to cross the road too soon. Maybe I wasn't paying attention. And where was this guy going? But in the moment, I began to employ this acronym that I want to share with you. And remember, this is before things escalate, before the emotions overpower. Because I'm no saint, I'm no angel. But I am aware that strong emotions can do good things, but they can also get us into big trouble. So I employed this, this acronym, which I have called WALK, because it reminds me to walk away. W-A-L-K, WALK. So the W stands for wider. And what I mean by that is think more widely. Widen your perspective, because when emotions overpower us or begin to, we our thinking becomes narrow. It becomes this person in front of me or this issue or this problem and it lacks subtlety. It can begin to get into binary, them and us, me and him. And I wanted to widen it. And in widening it, widening my perspective, my view on the situation, I then think about the famous words, words of, of Sherlock Holmes, which were, you see, but you do not observe. Observe what's happening. Ob observe yourself. Observe the situation. And so things that began to very rapidly appear uh, where that this guy jumped to the other side of the van. He wasn't running towards me. He was standing in place. His voice was actually slightly strained. He wasn't that sure of himself. He didn't really know, I think, what he was doing. I was also aware that there wasn't much traffic, but there were a few houses and flats around. I was also aware that I had a young four-legged person beside me that I wanted to protect. And again, I was also aware that he wasn't making any move towards me at all. And as part of that observation, I did wonder why he was around the other side of the van. And my guess is maybe he had something in that van to help defend himself because he didn't come across as someone who was particularly highly trained for some of the reasons I've just explained and other reasons as well. Most of the time, somebody who was managing the state well wouldn't have whizzed around, around about and driven back up based on nothing, based on his imagination. And that's the other thing I was beginning to think is, hold on a second, what, this, this individual possibly probably knew his driving was a little bit ridiculous and was kind of looking in the rear view mirror for some reaction. So a glance in his mind became, hold on a second, this individual's shouting at my driving, how dare he? So I thought this is somebody who's in a very, very, very raised emotional state. This person is in control of his emotions at this point. So all of that's going on quickly and then the the a in w a l k walk is basically audience and that may sound a little bit strange but if i could interject for a second and say that what we're doing here is we're applying cognition we're, we're trying to to balance out in a top down way the capacity the propensity for emotions to overpower to overtake particularly in terms of irritation, annoyance and anger, because anger, again, as I've said, can be to do with defending ourselves. So it's there for a reason. It would have been misplaced, at, certainly at that point in, in the interaction with this individual, badly mis misplaced in many ways. And so I wanted to, if I could, head it off at the pass, unless uh, things changed. And so 
thinking about those emotions, considering them, considering what is going on, using cognition, naming emotions is one way to stop the emotion or emotions taking control. And so the audience is part of that, the A and W-A-L-K. And I, th I thought, right, okay, so, so part of observing, but, but specifically, who's the audience here? Who else is around? There are flats over there. There's a house there. Was that a light that came on? Is someone walking a dog over there? And so on. Because these days in particular, we've got to be aware. There are phones everywhere. There are photographs. There are, there are people who can witness these things. And with the best intention, even if someone gets us annoyed enough, if we're the aggressor, if we move towards or we, in fact, find a way to exacerbate the situation and, and, and it's being observed, then somebody could misinterpret what we're doing or maybe we'd interpret it accurately because we, we get ourselves involved and that's not a good thing. Now, what you may think, well, hold on a second. So are you saying that you, if nobody was looking, then you might do something at that point? No, I wouldn't. I'm I'm really keen ne never to do that. D defense, yes, for sure, but as a last resort. So I'm keen not to. What I'm saying is that this is a, a mind game to say, what is that audience out there? Who is the audience? We need each and every one of us to remind ourselves that there are consequences. And this is what that's about. It's saying, think beyond the, the potential anger. Look at the consequences of the situation. Nobody wins ultimately in these sort of conflicts. And I, at that point, had irritation. I wasn't scared, the adrenaline was there, but if there was any fear, it was about what I might do. And that's not meant to sound big headed, not at all. What I mean by that is in, in those situations, things can go wrong, things can go catastrophically wrong. And I don't want to spell that out, but you can imagine. And it's more about the injury that you might inflict on someone else. At least that's what it was for me at that point. I'm sure there are situations when that would be reversed, but that's what I was thinking. So the audience means consequences. That's what I'm getting to. So widen your perspective, observe what's going on. That again, keeps us thinking more logically and then consider the audience, the consequences. And then the L in terms of the, the, the WALK acronym. The L for me means lability. And I've touched on this already, emotional lability. How, how, how is this person or these people in front of me? What state are they in emotionally? And this person seemed to be up and down. There was a point where he's looking at me and starts texting someone. The impression I got was to say, sorry, I'm a little bit late. The guy looked manic. He'd obviously misinterpreted totally what was going on in this interaction when I glanced at his van and then kind of stopped himself short from not moving towards me. He kept a safe distance. So he was being cute enough as far as that's concerned. But then he took his eye off the potential counter-strike um, by, by texting. I thought he's not really in a very good frame of mind. And that also made me then consider the situation. Who was I dealing with? It, was it possible a reason with this individual? Was it possible to talk to them? Was it possible indeed to get a bit closer to say, hey, shake your hand, you, whatever. No, I wasn't going to do that. Um, Probably that's not advisable in that situation anyway, but how emotional is this individual? And once more, by considering someone else's emotional state, it can help us get an anchor on an element at least of calmness. And then the K, which may sound odd, kindness is what it stands for. How can I be kind? What is going on in this individual's life? What I'm hoping to do at that point is to humanize rather than dehumanize. Yes, I could get very annoyed. There was a trace of that. Who the hell do you think you're talking to? What are you doing jumping out of your car, your van, in my hood, and look at you? Do you really think, do you you do you know who I am? And all that stuff. Again, I'm exaggerating now. Do you know who I am? No, he, he wouldn't know who I was, <laughs> and, and he shouldn't. But, but these are, again, those irrational thoughts that we can get into. So we can dehumanize. This is someone to be crushed. It's someone to be attacked. It's someone to retaliate back against and maybe with uh, much more venom than the simple words that he was using. So, 
Kindness helps us humanize. Look at the state of this individual. Look at what's going on right now. He's, I think I said, oh uh, yeah, I, I did glance at your car, something like that. We had a bit of dialogue and, um, well, yeah, I'm just trying to get home. Is that okay? And again, you're thinking, wow, what is this guy, you know, on perhaps? What is he doing? And I'm thinking, he's got a works van. It's got the name of the company. It's got the number plate. And I can see roughly the direction he's heading in. There aren't that many houses up there. This is, this is not someone who's remotely rational, but also again, because he didn't physically attack. He wasn't really doing anything. I could find myself thinking, this guy's having a hard time. And I used to, to, to teach and will be doing soon the mental health first aid, although my version of it has morphed a little bit compared to what I, I did before, but that's by the by. But in that, let's say, viewpoint of, of the world, when you look at individuals who may be in stress, then, or in distress, I should say, then you got to employ, you got to employ, in my opinion, kindness to do your job properly, the job of being a good citizen, being helpful to someone else. And so that kindness was humanizing. And I thought, whoa, wow. And I said, well, you know, I'm just gonna walk away. I'm really sorry you're having a, a, a bad uh, morning. What do you mean? And I said, well, these things can get out of hand. And I probably shouldn't have said that, but I did. What do you mean? And I said, well, things can get out of hand. And before you know it, everyone's in a bit of trouble. People can get hurt. Now, that may have been a little bit of irritation from me pushing back to say, you know, hold on a second. And he didn't really react to that. And I sort of began to walk away. And then he said, you'll be sorry. So of course I had an eye on him. I mean, I'm not saying be stupid with this stuff. Was he gonna make a run towards us at that point? And I thought, oh, is he? So I did kind of half turn. And I thought, no, what he means is if we had engaged in combat, then I would have been sorry. And I think that, yeah, you think that because you don't think I know you've got something in that car. Um, and that little bit of, I think knowledge, I could have been wrong, but may have been your undoing, my friend. You're not, you know, you're telling me a lot of stuff. And I've got friends, by the way, who are highly trained in these areas and would probably say, oh no, I wouldn't have done that, I'd have done it a little bit differently. And um, I've listened to them over the years, but I have found in listening to people who really are in tough situations a lot and how they manage their emotions that you do glean some stuff. And would the, the, the WALK acronym, would that work in every situation? No. Is it always to do with anger? No. It could be irritation. It could stop a snapping back, being annoyed. It probably has different applications and it certainly won't work in all of the emotionally charged situations. But I found it to be useful and I did walk away and everything was fine. And occasionally when I think about that situation, I think, oh, I could have said that. I could have, I could have done this thing differently. And yet I'm just so pleased that I didn't. So have a think about it. Again, that's an unusual interaction for me. And I may have gotten that totally wrong. Well, I'm absolutely not perfect. As I say, no saint, no angel, but it did have a good outcome, a really good outcome. And every time I think about it, I think, oh my gosh, the capacity for that to go sideways badly was relatively high. I'm really pleased with the way that I conducted myself. And that doesn't mean to say that you might not see me sometime going, my waiter, there's a fly in my suit and, and getting annoyed about some trivial thing. That can happen as well, but I'm better and it's work in progress. Anyway, I hope you find that useful. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you've applied something yourself. Let me know what your strategies are in terms of not being overpowered by strong emotions. Again, I'm aware that that's not always possible. And any other thoughts that you have. Thank you very much. Bye for now.